For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. The Gospel of Luke begins by, the author says, that there were many people who before him had written an account of the things Jesus said and did, and I think he's probably right, and he says that, um, that, that these accounts came down from eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. And so, in other words, th- their accounts uh, based on, what, on stories that people had passed along orally before somebody wrote them down, and Luke at least is admitting that he, acknowledging that there were people before him and presumably before the others as well. So uh, the, the ultimate answer is that the stories go back to something that happened in the life of Jesus. Uh, people told the stories for a number of years. Uh, there's nothing controversial about that. In the book of Acts, people are telling stories the whole time without writing them down. They're just telling the stories that mm-hmm. they've heard. Uh, and so uh, my view is a fairly standard view, which is that the stories were in circulation for many years. Uh, before the gospel writers produced their accounts. Uh, Jesus and his disciples, of course, were Aramaic speakers in, uh, in Galilee, a rural, a rural part of Galilee, and uh, the gospels are written in Greek. Uh, and so these are, uh, these are accounts that have, have, were originally passed around probably in the native language of Palestine, but then are la- later written, some decades later, by, by Greek-speaking Christians. Mm. Uh, and so ultimately they go back to, uh, to oral traditions, and uh, before the oral traditions there were, there were events that happened that these traditions are based on. Okay. And when it comes to the four that we typically have in, in our New Testaments, um, do, what, what do you say about exactly when we're likely? To, which would you say is the first? Where, how long after the events of Jesus' life would you estimate that it was written? And, and what do we make of? of well, I, I don't have an unusual dating of this. I mean, mm-hmm. I basically follow the, the mainstream scholarly line, which is that Mark is probably the first gospel written sometime around the year 70 or so, probably. Um, which would put it about 40, 40 years, years or so about 40 after 40 years the life after of Jesus. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's our first account that mm-hmm. we have. There were probably ones earlier, but we don't have them. Uh, Matthew, Matthew and Luke both appear to have used Mark as one of their sources. Uh, I, I can't remember if Peter actually agrees with that or not, but, but we'll there, find out. there's a lot of, I mean, there are word-for-word agreements in okay. Greek mm-hmm. uh, that, that are sustained over a long period of time. It's hard mm-hmm. to explain that unless somebody's copying somebody mm-hmm. else or mm-hmm. copying a common source. Mm-hmm. And so Matthew and Luke have those similarities between each other and with Mark. And so it's usually thought that Matthew and Luke came later than Mark. And they're normally dated to the 80s, 80, 85, something like that. So 50, 55 years after Jesus' death. And John is almost always seen as the last gospel and usually dated toward the end of the first century, say 90 or 95, so maybe 60, 65 years after Jesus' death. So so the time gap between Jesus' uh, death and the first accounts of his life are between 40 and 65 years. Okay. And um, we'll come to talking about the actual authorship of those gospels in a moment. But where do you stand on on the dating of the gospels? I know this is a big area in yeah. in New Testament scholarship that, that we're talking about. Well, I, I'm, I'm deliberately non-committal on the subject mm-hmm. of dating because uh, the way I'd put it is the gospels don't come with dates on, but they do come with names on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, if we just start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and there there are no you know, there aren't early manuscripts without those names on, and I don't think it's likely that four gof- gospels were each composed anonymously and then got these names on we we can have some Talk discussion about, about that because yep. i think we're going to differ um so then you ask yourself the question um say with mark and luke if it weren't for the gospels of mark and luke um the names mark and luke would be sort of nobodies so i can't see a reason for people to stick those names on unless those are um, authentic and then the time scale for the gospels has to be the time scale of people who can do the things that mark and luke uh, did Luke is portrayed as a companion of Paul mm-hmm. um, so I, I'm not going to be putting it late in the first century I'm mm-hmm. going to be uh, putting it somewhere earlier uh, with Matthew and John again uh, we can't say the dates but if these are people who were disciples of Jesus then it, it's going to have to be plausibly within the lifetime of of people who could be disciples of Jesus around the year 30. So um, those are the way I, I would look at it. But then I'd, I'd also say, let's look at the internal signs within uh, the Gospels. And you start saying, um, what's the level of familiarity that these mm. people have uh, with the time and place they're writing about? Um, do they know the geography? Do they, you know, when they just write about the Valley of Kidron, say, in the Gospel mm. of John, I say, okay, the, the, check you know they they know some certain amounts about uh, where things are um when they're starting to use um aramaic words or specialist um 
term. So the way Luke will talk about, he'll use dry measures and right. liquid measures, which are very Palestinian, the seer, mm -hmm. uh, the core, um, and the bath, you know, which uh, he uses in chapters 13 and 16. You know, ha what sort of knowledge do that, does that mm. presuppose? And I think from that you build up a sense of uh, these people either came from the land and therefore they knew this sort of stuff, or they'd had very detailed conversations with people who were in the land, right. or they'd followed detailed sources that had mm. been in land. That's the sort of way I'd mm. look at it. So, mm. so in other words, I, I've got a different story from um, the way uh, Bart puts it, where I think Bart has, you know, um, uh, rural uh, peasant Ar Aramaic speakers, big sort of gap through some time of transmission to Greek speaking writers. And I, I would want to explore um, the various stages of that, because although I would say uh, rural in one sense, you know, I would say, well, if they're hanging around Capernaum, it's one of the most densely populated, you know, um, uh, areas, 